Hello guys, so I'm currently with Ricardo Teixeira. Hey Ricardo, what's up man? I'm good. You're good, okay, I'm awesome. Good. So you already saw Ricardo uh, on this channel because I interviewed him like a few years ago in Portugal about his career as a worldwide champion of karate. And in this interview, we explored also the relationship between uh, becoming a worldwide champion and becoming an entrepreneur. But we didn't have time to really dig into your career as an entrepreneur. So I was like, let's do another interview to speak about that. Because not only you are a worldwide champion of karate, but you're also a successful entrepreneur. Okay. So for those who didn't see uh, watch the video about his career as a worldwide champion, just click on the uh, link somewhere and uh, be sure to watch this video because it's awesome. So Ricardo. Hey. Hey. So you were a worldwide champion of karate yes. a few years ago. A few years ago. Like in 1993. Like in 1993. <laughs> uh, 93, really? Yes. Okay, wow, okay. So you were, you were very young when you became yeah. a worldwide yeah, champion. Yeah, I, like, I was 20 years old. 20 years old. Yeah, and the seniors were at 21, so I was one year earlier. Okay. Yeah. So at 20 years old, so beside karate, what, what, what did you do with your life? So uh, when I was, um, uh, if, I, if I go a little bit, you know, rewind a little bit. I was um, studying uh, computer science, and uh, and I was passionate about computers. So I had when I was nine years old, I watched. Uh, um, <laughs> you probably don't don't remember, but the people of plus forty remembers about the Sinclair. It was a, a computer Sinclair. It was forty eight k in terms of memory, and I fell in love with that. And so and then I did all my studies around that because I. I wanted to do something about that. And so I studied in, in, uh, in, um, in all my life in, in Coimbra to the university. <laughs> oh, it's a private joke, so yeah, okay. So in the, the, this town in Portugal? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I, I studied everything and I also did some freelance jobs like um, software developer or even word processor also in, uh, in, uh, in computers. And so when I was like, 20 at the same time when I was world champion, I was doing some freelance jobs for some companies like... Uh, to, to, to create software? Yes, yes. Okay. yeah, that was the thing that I was doing. So you were a freelancer for some companies, so you were already creating like uh, coding for them. Yeah. But so that's interesting because you were young and you were working as freelancer for them. How did you manage to get them as, a, as customers? Did they... Oh, it's a good, it's a good question. So yeah. one, of, one of the things that I did is, uh, well, First of all, it was not common to have a, a kid uh, in computers, especially in the, in the place where I was growing. And so, so I, yeah, and also in the place, in the neighborhood. And so I was referenced by people about uh, computers. Um, and and that, is, that is one thing. The other one is I offered myself to do uh, some kind of jobs because I want to have the experience. So that's one of the things that I see most of the times that people it's, I cannot call a mistake, but it's something that I, I, I incentivate people to do, which is work for free, you know? Oh, so it's just for free? I worked, uh, so what? some of the, the, the jobs, I wanted to do it. Uh, some of them, they paid in the end, but I offered myself, I said, okay, I want to work with your company. I really would like to do this. So if you, if you don't pay me, I would like to do it anyway. Because hmm. I knew that that That's company- motivation that company would give me a lot of leverage for my future, for knowledge, because I knew some people that were there working, I wanted to, to get that knowledge, and also in terms of resume, because they were like a, a big company, so I wanted to work with them. And most of the people, they don't have patience to, to work or to get this kind of experience uh, for free. Right. Because it's not for free. They are paying for our learning. So yeah, that's one of, one of the things that I did. Okay, so you contacted a few of them and you didn't work full time for them. It was like- No, because I was studying, job. yeah. So, but did you work, did you have to go because it was before internet, so did you have to go to yes. their office to work? Well, uh, yes, but I, uh, during the university, I already had a Amstrad, which was a-, a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I, I, I use that too a little yeah. bit, yeah. And so I work at home and I would bring the source code. So you were coding on your Amstrad, but for other machines. Yes. So it was possible to do that. Yeah. It yeah, was, it but was. you couldn't test of course, the no, program. Yeah, no. it was just text, basically. Exactly. Yeah, 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 and I would bring in and then test it there, and I would come up. That's funny. That's exactly what uh, Bill Gates, Bill Gates and Paul did. Allen did I for know. their first software. They yeah. coded it 
without if they couldn't test yes, it. Yes. Yeah. Then they brought it to the. Th that is amazing what yeah, they did because it worked. Like, that was and, amazing. Anyway, so yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. So I did that because at the same time I was doing uh, for money. I was doing uh, bodyguard. Also, I was doing bodyguard, <laughs> boxing because yes. you were the fucking worldwide champion of karate. So <laughs> no, why not? Because I, was, I needed the money and I had some skills, so <laughs> so I used that. But anyway, um, I was doing that not only for the money, but for the knowledge. I was thinking ahead. I was thinking like a few years ahead. Uh, because I I need I wanted to do something I want to be an entrepreneur in that field in in, I, in software development yes I don't know if it was software or network but especially software yeah I was a little bit involved with the coding so so okay you, yeah. so you start with this and then when, what's next so what happened was I graduate in 1995 I think yeah I graduate and and I I was like. <sighs> What should I do? Should I open immediately my 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 firm, my my company, or should I work for others? So, which is a question a lot of people ask themselves oh if yes. they want to be entrepreneurs. Oh yes, so oh, yes. because the thing is, I was used to uh, being charged <laughs> because I was a, a a master in my dojo, so I was teaching already 400 people, and so. You were teaching karate. Yes, teaching karate. So were you making money with that? Well, yes, I did some money. Yes, um, but yes. you could live with that if you I wanted could, to. I could. Yeah. No, I could not scale. Well, today we could scale with the online courses and all but that stuff. Not at the time. But not at that time. I but mean, time, you could, but. I just, it was very hard, yes. Yeah, yeah. And also we had to build like a pyramid with people that would work for me, that would teach, and I would get a percentage. But I, I never liked that kind of things. Yeah, right. Yeah, I never liked it. So, and for me, uh, it was a question of it, giving me money, of course. Um, people would give value, because we know if, if people go for free, they don't give value. And, and so it was already kind of an entrepreneur. I was being an entrepreneur. I was always trying to look to the dojo as, okay, how can I do it um, in a faster way? How can I do it? which the experience would be great for the student, not only the martial arts, but also the, the thing around that. Like, for example, we would send every three months information to the parents saying, how are they? What could they improve? Uh, we would ask for the school. So it oh, we, so you went all the way, like oh, yeah. way farther than oh, most yeah. karate yeah, yeah, school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, we were totally different. And we would do like, for example, every time there is an event, Imagine that uh, Saturday and Saturday during the weekend we have an event. We would do a press release before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. So that would help, help us to get in the press and at the same time get more clients, more students. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that, that was a way to look to the entrepreneurship also, definitely. And um, yeah, and suddenly my, when I was graduate, my mother sent um, an application with my resume to um, your CV a CV yeah. Yeah, yeah to the to the um, I don't know if it's it's not government but it's also it's not it's not private it's uh, where they have the stats okay okay it's like the, the office of statistics yes, of Portugal yes, yes. Which is not, it doesn't sound like the most exciting job ever. No, but it, it was a software developer. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yeah, it was a software developer. So it was interest. I cannot say that it was not interest. It was interest. But the funny part was... But so, wait, your dojo, it was your company? Oh, it's, uh, legally, it was not a company. Oh. Uh, it was so, myself. It oh, was myself. But so you were already selling yes. yourself. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. You were already an entrepreneur. Of course. When you graduated. Yeah, yeah, because, because I, had, I had two schools. Uh, at the same time, I was, I was selling also, you know, the, the kimonos, the belts, the gloves. I was selling that also inside the, the dojo. So I was already an entrepreneur in my, in my dojo. So I was feeling that side. So to go and work to another, to a person, it would, it would be like... Total different game. Right. So I'm not. I was not. So you mother sent her CV <laughs> yeah. to, to because, the, to mostly the government. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Because she thought, <laughs> oh, it's a it's a perfect job. It's secure and everything. You know, you all have parents, and so uh, she sent that. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going. But suddenly I saw that there were 400 people applying for that. So I said, okay. Oh, four. But and they selected you. 
Well, yes, yes, but what applied to me was okay, 400 people. Just competition. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's see how, how I go, you know? So I went through the phases. It, it was like two days, complete like eight hours. I, I, I've never done something like that. So it was a good experience at the same time. So I went for eight hours and they select like three people. I was one of the three. And then they got an interview, a live interview with the, you know, the, all the bosses and everything. And then they select me. But after 10 months, I quit <laughs> because I was working from nine to five there, but I would stay from five to seven, eight there. Because mm. I was like, okay, I don't want to go home. I want to do this. Wow. And so also people start to complain a little bit. They were like, oh, I don't know. He's, he's working too much. He's working too much. Yeah, yeah. that's a common complaint. Yes. Organization. yes. They don't want to yeah. stand out too much. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I start, and, but anyway, I start to, so I build my company in the middle of this. And it's one of the things that sometimes I say to people, okay, if you want to have a company and you have your job, okay, just keep your job until you feel secure and work after job. So that's what I start to do after the job, because I saw it was hard and I was getting enemies. So what I start to do is from five to 10, 11, I start to build my company. I start to, you know, the papers, the I start to understand. I didn't know nothing about hardware, you know, how to build a computer. So I start to build computers. I start to understand a little really, bit more. Why? Because your goal was to buy, to build a, a software company, right? Yeah. Well, my goal was to have a, a technology company. I was not sure mm. if it was a software because I knew that hardware and software I, I needed to understand, even though I could make some money. But I, in my mind, I, I thought, okay. The money is in the software, in the software business. But I need to understand the machine. Mm. So I need to understand how the, and does it work. For the record, what language did you learn at school? At school, oh, it was, the, the first was Pascal. Okay. It was Pascal, which was cool. Um, we also had a little bit basic. Um, because base is the base. Uh, it's, it's not good. It's not good because it has a lot of defects. Pascal was was really good, and then we start to learn uh, C, C, and in in the university we had a lot of language. Okay. So because the idea in the university was to understand how the language works and not going deep in one language. Okay. So yeah. All right. So you begin to study uh, like on your part time after yes. work. How to create your company yeah. then. and so and then i after 10 months i just uh, i had like two three clients that i was gathering through my friends and so, so, so they were asking you to, to create software for well, them uh, in that time it was more like oh i want to do this computer and i want it was selling hardware because it ah, was easier i started like that too yeah yeah it was easier it was easier because developing the software it takes more time so mm, yeah right uh, so that was the the easiest part so um, so after 10 months, I was like, okay, uh, I need to do this like full time, uh, full time. So I quit, I quit. They were a little bit surprised because I was like, uh, they were expecting me to go another year. And so I quit. Uh, of course, my parents were like, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it, uh, it was a good call. It was a good call. Because? Well, because I was not happy. I was not happy there. And I was feeling that um, even though the life of entrepreneur has a lot of ups and downs, I, I usually say that we are gladiators because we go to the field. We don't know if, if we are going to kill or be killed, you know? Um, but um, in the end of the day, we control our faith, um, our destiny. And, um, and, and I was not feeling that when I was working there. I was just, you know, and, and I think it is possible to work with some money and feeling happy, but I was like in the cage. Too many rules, too many things that I could not do, even if I would improve. Yeah, yeah. So, so this yeah. was just an environment for an entrepreneur. Oh, no, no, no. So when you decided to quit, did you already, were you making money with your... A little bit, your, yeah, a little yeah, bit not, not sufficient enough. Okay, so you were now yeah, on the risk. But did you yeah. still have your dojo? Because I don't oh, yes, but yes, I how have. How could you still have your dojo and your job yeah. and build your business? Well, one of the things that I learned through times is time management. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I learned how to prioritize and also the... 
some of the principles that we start to know the name that we didn't, I didn't know that time, you know, like Parkinson law or Pareto law, all that stuff. So you learn how to be more productive. Yes, yes. So, and, and that was something that I always had in my life. I always had a lot of things at the same time. Um, I remember when I was a Boy Scout, which was amazing to be a, also an entrepreneur. Okay, I advise you. Yeah, if you, if I you mean, kids. we were chatting about that today. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, we yes. were like, maybe being a Scout is like the oh, yes. best uh, training to be an entrepreneur because they teach totally you how agree. to be autonomous, to do stuff that most people would think it's crazy, but for yeah. us it's normal. Yeah, I so, totally, agree. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree. Being a Boy Scout, I was like almost like 15 years, and so I learned a lot, a lot, a lot in there. Um, so, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how did you have the time to do oh, yeah, everything? The time. You know? yeah. yeah, so like I was saying, when I, when I was, uh, when I was uh, uh, even when I was in, in school, during uh, high school and um, even university, I had always a lot of friends in different, because I, 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 never, I never had my own group of friends. I had several groups. Mm -hmm. So, because my idea was to meet a lot of people at the same time. So, that was another thing that I started to do is with Boy Scouts, I, I start to meet a lot of people um, from the different points in the country and some, some international. With karate, I start to meet a lot of people from other countries because I was doing uh, international competitions. And so I, I start to see that it was, it was important to have these connections. And I usually say that connection is the fifth principle to be unstoppable. That's a thing that I teach in my in one of my courses, and so I start to realize that okay, I need to meet all, all of these people. So um, I start to develop also my my network in the universe because I knew that in in the, in the end would would uh, pay off. And so, um, like I said, I start to learn a lot about time management to deal with this time and to deal with uh, what was the priority for me. Uh, it, it was a really good school, really good school. Yeah. Okay. So you decide to quit. Yes. And you still don't make sufficient no. money to, to live. So what do you do? So w one of the things that I, uh, that I did is the pressure with money, is, it's, it's a good pressure. It's a good pressure because it makes us, you know, it's a, like a kick in the butt. But you were not in a in position of danger because you were still living with yes, your parents, exactly. right? I was going to say so that. So it's also important yeah. to say that. that yeah, it is. Because it that's is. also a myth that uh, most people, a lot of people think that entrepreneurs are a bit chemicals. Yeah. They take huge risk. But usually it's not true at all. It's true. They take like calculated risk and they have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, a plan Z, oh, Z yeah. uh, if something is like go, goes wrong. Yeah. So you knew that worst case, yeah. you, you, you would be with your parents so you didn't have to pay the rent and yes. stuff like that. So yes. you, you knew you wouldn't be on the street, right? Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But at that time, uh, so when I start my company, when I start my company, like almost like two, I think it was only the first or the second year, I think it was the second year, um, my my parents had a cafe that sold, they sold the cafe, mm -hmm. so so there was a little bit risk, you know, because the, no income for my parents. Mm. Uh, I have I have my income, and uh, so there was a little bit risk in the in the beginning, and in a certain point a big risk. But I, we'll get there. So you were asking about the the beginning was um, record me. Yeah, but I mean, um, we were talking about the, the risk and also the, um, yeah, how, how, so you got the pressure, you had the pressure to make money. So yeah. what did you do? So one of the things that I realized is I needed some money to, to survive so I can build my, my software. And so more or less at the same time, my, my master, my master, my first master, my, my, first, master. Yes, my first one, had a, a, a legal issue. He had a divorce. Hmm. And so... Um, and so I helped on that. I helped on that. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with lawyers. I spent a lot of time with lawyers. So I started to realize that they, they needed help for management because they, they, they knew the technical part, the legal stuff. But the management, the billing, the client management, all, the marketing, all that stuff, they don't know shit, okay. basically. <laughs> yeah. and, so, uh, and so I started to see that it was interesting to develop something there. But... As a single guy, developing software and writing the code and survive at the same time would be hard. So, so I did a little bit like a contract with my first master, and he supplied me some money to survive, at least, okay, for the for a certain period. That would help to because I I, I was trying to um, also get some help because I knew that to develop software alone it would take me 
forever. forever yeah. yeah. And so I would have had some, some help. And with that money, I could hire two people and they would help me on, on the software. So that's how I started also. Uh, so I usually say that I started from negative because I start owing someone. <laughs> <laughs> but so why you must have paid you this money? So uh, I didn't get it. Why, why your master paid you this? Uh... Yeah, it, it, it just helped me. Okay, just to help. Yeah, just to so help. So your goal and was... And didn't give me like a lot of money. No, he gave me like a sufficient every you, month. Your goal was to write a software for attorneys yeah. already. Yeah. But did you already have someone who was interested? Yes, because the lawyers that were working with my, my master, master. Uh, they didn't have anything. So you told them. So I proposed that. I can't. Can, okay, and they said yes, but we need to see the software first before. No, no. Well, what I proposed was okay, could you be my client pilots, you know, my beta testing clients, mm -hmm. and uh, in returning, I will offer you the software and the maintenance and everything for forever? So even, oh, even will... today, they are, they are our uh, main, well, they are also our lawyers, but oh, they really? are our main Interesting. tester. And they 20 are, years of, after. Yes. Yeah, 21 years but after. Do, do, so they still not pay, don't pay? No. Wow. But okay, but you can ask them one, one them. billion questions if you want to. Yeah. That's, that's the deal. Yeah. You ask them, uh, what about these features? What yes. do you think? Yes. Blah, blah. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, all right. And they, they were amazing. Yeah. That's, a, I mean, it's a long partnership. So oh, yes. It's interesting to me that it started yeah. like that. Okay, so you, you begin to recruit people? Well, uh, so I recruit uh, two, two people. And but how? You didn't have well, the money. I didn't have the money. So what I did is a percentage. <laughs> I said, OK, if we could sell this, you could get some percentage. And, uh, and they were like, um, I think two of, the, two of them, they were still students. So they were working a little bit with me at mm, the same okay, time. Okay, was like part-time. Yeah, so. and, and I would give them like a very small money that, that I would, you know, very short money only f to help their expenses in terms of the university. And so th that's how I start to build the, the software. Yeah. Awesome. And? And <laughs> so this was... So what, was it, was that, what year was that? 1996. Okay. Yeah, 1996, so 1997. So, Indianness was beginning to yeah. rise, but it was still... Yeah, and, it, and, and to be honest, it took us almost like two years to have a, a first version of the software. Oh, no. But what did you do for two years? Yeah, because we, are, we were developing the stuff, and we started to develop in, in, a, in a language called uh, FoxPro. Mm -hmm. uh, FoxPro was a kind of uh, database that Microsoft had for a long time. Uh, it was a, like a little bit of competition with Access. I don't know if you know, but anyway. And um, so we were developing that, but then we faced a lot of challenge and the, 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 the technology started to change and we realized that we had to change also that. So you had to develop again from scratch? Oh, yes. oh my God. Yes, yes. I'm sure it, it was like excruciating for you to it, make it, this decision. It was, it was. It was like, oh, we have to throw up everything to the garbage. But at the same time... We... Wait, wait, after how many months did you realize that? <coughs> oh, probably one year, probably. Wow, so yeah. one year of work, you had to trash Probably, it. Yes, but we, we put that software in, the, in our partners, you know, our clients' partners. Oh, so you could give you feedback. Yeah, yeah for uh, sure, yes. So it was not, I cannot say, oh, it was totally throw up. No, no, we learned a lot, we learned a lot. But we, in the terms of technology point, we had to develop again. So, so we started to develop that. And, um, and on 1999, we had like the, the, the 1.0 version for what we call in production, which means for to the market. And we start to sell on that, uh, more or less, 1999. And, and in 2000, uh, in Portugal, we had Microsoft uh, used to do a kind of um, the Oscars of software. Mm -hmm. They would do like a kind of, uh, you know, even like a gala, you know. Uh, it was very, very, very cool for the, the geeks. <laughs> so, but you were invited? And we, <clears throat> sorry, it's, and then we, we, we applied to oh, this competition. Okay. We applied and we won. Awesome. So it, it was really cool uh, that we won. At the same time, it was a cool year. This was 2000. And at the same time. But so wait, because we went from 1996 to 2000, oh, yeah. so four years. So first, 1997 was the official opening of my company. Okay, so one year uh, coding a uh, software that wasn't used, the yeah. one more year to f with a good language. Yeah. So then finally you finished the software. So did you manage to sell it? Yeah, we started to sell in 1999. 
Okay, uh, and uh, how did you get your first customers? Well, I, it was tough, but uh, mainly visiting them. So, but and direct what, mail. Oh, so but so you you you, you took that the uh, yeah okay. the yellow pages. Yes, the yellow pages exactly, and uh, you went oh, yes. to see them, or you did you call well, them? Well, uh, both. But are you are you a born seller? No, I, I wasn't. So what did you do? I hated that. I hated that part. But I I had to visit them also, and also I knew that I had to you know go to the market and see what would be the objections, what would be uh, the key points, uh, because for sure one office was not enough to see the you know it was not enough to see the sample of the market, to see the the trends, the the. Um, because when we start to sell, immediately we start to see features that they don't apply for the first one, but applies for the second one. Right. And mo most of these features that we start to see in the beginning are key features that would apply to everyone. So that's one of the things that were very, very important to get this feedback of the client. But I, I must mention that when you open the company also, there was an important and a key moment, which was choosing the name of the company. And? And I spend a lot of time trying to, to come up with the name of the company. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. It's a, lot, a big problem for a lot of entrepreneurs. It is, <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, because it's, it's the branding and, it, and you want something. And I didn't know much about marketing. Uh, I had a couple books that I, I was reading because my first master enjoyed a lot of, about marketing. I still have the books that he, he gave me mm. to study marketing. And I, I knew that I had to have a name catch uh, a name that could catch and uh, have an attention. So I come up with the kamai. Kamai is a, is the is a Japanese word connected with the martial arts to mean to be aware and to be in a stand position. And so, so I came up with this. It's not kiai, yeah? it's kamai, yeah, and it's we, ka we we'll go to the kiai. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll go there. We'll go there. We'll yeah, go there after. So, but that was a key moment because even today, after 21 years, the name is still good in terms of. Um, you know, getting attention and else. Of course, it has some, some issues also. Because sometimes we, we write with K and they write with C sometimes. So. Right. Yeah, nothing is perfect. <laughs> so you get your first customers. Yeah. So you can pay your uh, first employees yes. with a percentage. Yeah. And everyone is happy? Well, try to be. Okay. Because it's not uh, still, it's not uh, a lot of revenue, but uh, we are we are but, starting. But you can make a living from it or not? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. The, f the first year? Yes. Also, well, first year, no. We are in the third year, 1999. Oh, okay. okay. We are well. in the third year of the company when we released the well, And you were still uh, living uh, with your parents? Uh, good question, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah. So, and how old were you in 1999? Uh... I was <laughs> 25, 26. <laughs> so, what year are we? 18. So, 19. <laughs> so, 20. So, yeah, 25. 25. 25. Yeah, 25. 24, 25. Okay. Around that, yeah. So, 25. So, I mean, it's a good age. And uh, it is. Living with your parents was a smart choice. Yeah. It's, you're yeah. the embodiment of the startup. Or yeah. You didn't start in your garage, but. Well, More or less, yes. It wasn't garage, but it was the. Um, how do you know the the balcony? Yeah, right. <laughs> the balcony in my. In the, okay. Yeah, it was in the balcony. So. Okay, so you you begin to to sell copies in yeah. Portugal. Yes. And then you apply for the Microsoft competition. Yes, and, and you, you won. win. Uh, yes. So, how many and competitors did you have? Oh, well, a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, I don't know the exact number, but I, I remember it was hundreds. Did you do something special to win that? No, no, not. just your software it, it was. It was a enough. complete surprise because we sent. I, we totally forgot, and so I received a letter a few months after. I received a letter saying, "Hey, you won this," and I was like, "Cool." <laughs> and then there was a check also. Oh. Yeah, because it, it was a, a prize money. So not much, but it was a prize money. So I was like, oh, cool. But so did you do to an award ceremony? or? Yeah, we had an award ceremony. We still have the, the picture and all that stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. did it help you to put you on the map or of not? Of course. Yeah, it helped. But it was not the, the... There was another thing that helped us to put in the map. What? Which was we... Because software, is, we were not selling a lot because... Uh, uh, we have to put this in perspective. Lawyers didn't have computers at that time. Hmm. Okay. Wow. So uh, I was. Crazy think about it. Yes. Yeah. So they were still having typing machines. In two thousand. Yes. Yes. Really? Some type machines. Some 
they had computers, but they only used like, like word process and uh, to have a, a system that would manage, it was something beyond their dreams. Mm. Okay? So it was a hard sell. It was a hard sell. Because they had to buy a computer. Yes. For everyone. Yes, yes. So it was really, really, because usually they had a computer or a type machine for the secretary. Uh, that would, you know, they would write in, on paper the contracts and she would type them. Okay? So it was, not, it was a hard sell. But I knew it was, uh, it, it, it was coming. And in 2000, g the government um, sent a law saying that, okay, because the internet was already in, and they, they uh, released um, a law saying that, okay, you have to um, apply to the court in an electronic way. And so that helped to, you know. Oh, really? Yes, that yeah. helped a lot. So the government helped? Uh, yes. But that was not the key point. The key point was in, more or less in 2000 also, um, I met, I met through a friend, I met a, a guy called Luis Matos, and he's a, one of the best magicians in the world. And so it happened by chance. I was uh, like side by side in the same table and we were talking and we were, we were doing some websites for people. We, we were, you know, uh, I had a, a friend that was working with me and we were doing some websites. And so I said to this guy, oh, why don't I, we do your website for free and in return we can use your image and you can use your name to publicize. And he's a really big name in Portugal. Hmm. Now in the world. Uh, he's a big, big name, you know. His name is like David Copperfield, the same thing. Hmm. So, um, so he said yes. He said, okay, let's do. So we did that. And a few months later, we, uh, we had also, uh, it's funny how these things disappear, but they were very good at that time. We had uh, Oscars also for the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of Oscars, like the, the best blogger, the best website. In the, and so we, we were elected the best website in the entertainment uh, field. Entertainment? Yes, because he's a, he's a, a magician. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So the, the web, and we, I remember that we were developing the, the website. And there was a, a, time, frame, a time frame for, um, for applying to the, this competition. And uh, we were developing until like 7 a.m., you know, developing uh, like tricks on the web mm -hmm. using the technology at that time. And uh, so it was very interactive, uh, the, um, the website. So we won that. So we started to use his name also as a, as a client reference mm -hmm. uh, for a small company like we. It was awesome. That's really awesome. So it's interesting how you build like slowly your yeah. fame, your reputation yeah. in Portugal yeah. using awards, uh, awards and also oh, yes. uh, interesting customers. And so this customer, he didn't pay, right? It's like it no, he didn't pay. So you have this a bit of working for free yeah. in exchange for experience and also testimonials. And these, I mean, yeah. uh, my dear uh, Rebels Intelligent, uh, it's something you can do too. Um, just try to work for free. Of course, it's not the goal of your life, yes, right? Yes, of course. But just to get experience and testimonials and it will help to start the machine. No, especially if the testimonial is something very with a big authority. Hmm. Because the idea here with, uh, with, my, with the, now he's my friend, but the idea with him was like, he was a big authority. You know, people would look to him like a reference and he's still a reference. And so, um, that build immediately, it transferred authority also for us. So it was a good thing. So my idea was, okay, let's build the business in different areas so we can have first revenue to survive. Mm -hmm. And second, we don't know where the trends goes because we knew that the lawyers would start slowly because of the, you know, the market. So they get used to it. And so the internet was blowing. And so the websites, and at the same time, um, we, we got a small investment. This was in like 2001. We got a small investment from a, um, someone that I knew in karate in, in the United States that invested to build a software for billing for entrepreneurs. Okay. And that was another key moment because um, we developed the software. In 2002, it was faster. In 2002, we, we released the software. And we didn't have the money for the marketing, for the marketing. So I said, okay, how can I, how can I put the, the software in front of everyone with almost zero money? And how can I do this launch in a very, very effective way 
where I, I don't have to manage with logistic, I don't have to manage with the invoicing, I, I only have to manage with the maintenance or technical support of the software. That was the question that was in my head. And, and I want to reach as much possible, uh, as much people as possible. Mm -hmm. So I was one day walking in the street of Lisbon, and I realized that there were a lot of uh, what are called kiosks. Uh, kiosks? Yeah. yeah, kiosks. Yeah. And so there's a place where they you know, sell newspapers. Sell newspapers yeah, yeah. And I was watching it, and there is everywhere. I was like, everywhere. So I realized... I think it's a bit less everywhere now, but it yeah, was true. It was it's the true. time. Yeah, At yeah. that time, they had... They had a massive... It was a massive was distribution massive, network. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they, were, they had like 15,000 uh, spots. So, so I got a contract. Uh, so I contact. Uh, there were like two or three distribution companies. So I contact one of them, and I and I managed to have a contract of distribution to those uh, spots. Mm -hmm. And for me to produce fifteen thousand CDs or thirty thousand, because I want to put two CDs in every spot. That's a lot. Thirty thousand? No, it was not a lot. Because oh. if you if you if you make the math, thirty thousand times uh, maybe like one euro. Maybe less. It was less the production of the CD. It was a CD and a, and a, a placard. Um, so I got with uh, less than twenty five thousand euros uh, a visibility, a national visibility. And did it help? Well, we did one million. One million of sales. <laughs> so wow. So it's crazy. It, it was amazing. So, but okay, it, like, so the software was for who? For entrepreneurs, for, but, but small business owners. So it was to, to do billing. Do billing, inventory. So it was uh, like a magazine with two CDs? Well, it was, a, it was a, like a board. We had the board because I knew that I had to show the CDs and they have to be big because when we are in the competing with the newspapers, you put a newspaper like this and, you know, the yeah, newspapers yeah. are not seen. So I want to put something big with, with the CD. So the big was only That's like smart. the marketing, yeah, you know. Thinking of the box, yeah. Yeah. So what they do, they would put like behind, because also the price that we put is it was very it was it cost like uh, uh, translating. So it was uh, less than so twenty five euros. So it was like around thirty euros. Mm -hmm. Thirty euros, which is very cheap for a it's software at the time. But was the support included or not? Yes, for uh, 60 days. Okay, so okay. you got a lot so, of emails. Yeah, well, not much, but we had a lot of also phone calls. What is the software where you had the photo of the dog? Yeah, it was that one. Okay, yeah. tell us about the dog, why you, you did that, because so, it's very interesting. Because the, the thing is, I want to put this software as, you know, as do a big launch with this. And also in terms of marketing, again, I was trying to get, set up an image that could give credibility. Mm -hmm. And so at that time I had a, a German Shepherd, a German Shepherd, a dog German Shepherd. And, and so I realized, I mean, one day I was with him and I realized, okay, what if I put the, the name of the, our softwares are always with the, the prefix of the name of the company. So it's always Kamai, Gest, Gest is uh, management in, the, in Portuguese. So Kamai Gest or Kamai Law, Law of Law, <laughs> or uh, Kamai Bank, which was a software for banks. Anyway, so, so what if we put Kamai Gest, the best friend of your business? <laughs> That's awesome, with a, a photo of you and the dog. <laughs> yes, with That's a photo good. of me. And, uh, so that was a way That's of- a, That's a good marketing trick. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah. and, and you, you came up with the idea. Yes. I came awesome. up with an idea. I had a friend, again, in the martial arts world. I had a friend that was a photographer. So, as you can see, the story of Ricardo is like, I, I had a friend <laughs> and <laughs> something amazing happened. So, no, it helps also, I mean, oh, just yeah. as a side note to, to be like, to have friends and yes, to it's, it's, talk with them. It's, and it's very it gives important. gives you ideas, yes, like creativity. It's very important. Because to be alone is, you know, yeah, so nobody wins alone. So, you, you got the idea of putting the dog and it, yeah. it also helped. It to, helped a lot. A lot for the sales, and you made one million euros of sales. Yes. Okay. Because people, people connect. So basically, any uh, every company in Portugal bought your software. No, no, but because a lot of people bought only for curiosity, also. Mm. Oh, really? So yes. so two euros was and, like. And the thing is, I I knew because I read in the, some books. I knew that I, okay, I need to have seven to nine touching points, so the person buys by impulse. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to go through a kiosk and they go like, okay, 
I see this, I see this, I put in the subconscious and then they buy. And that really happened. That really happened. But is it when also you had this big problem with a distributor? Yes, that, oh. that's the second phase. Okay, so tell, tell us about this story okay. because it's amazing. And it's, so, it's a good example of a oh roller coaster yeah. in the yeah, entrepreneur's a, life. Oh, yes. So, so I, I do this launch. The launch is amazing. It's like uh, we, are, we are selling like crazy. Uh, but I did a, a beginner's mistake. I put all the eggs in the same basket. So whatever was... Uh, they got the money, but they were in... A, Who got the money? The, the distribution company. Yeah, yeah. But they were on the verge of bankruptcy. And I didn't know that. Mm. I didn't know that. So they went bankrupt and I didn't receive the money. My goodness. Yes. So and that was this, really, really tough. It's bad because you had to pay for the CDs. Oh, yes. You had to do the support for 60 days. Yes. You, you knew you had one million waiting for you and you couldn't get it. Yes. My God. It was... Second stage of your life where it's like, I'm, I'm sure it was like no, a it, mess. No, it was. It was because I, at that time we had 12 people in the company. Uh -huh. Because we, we, we grew up very fast in terms of uh, developers that we needed and also uh, the technical support. Because we knew that we would have a lot of people. So, so I did this bet like, uh, you know, 60 days or 90 days before selling because we knew that we were going to ramp up with this because I, I was sure that it was a technique that was going to win. It was true. And it was true, but... There was, but there was something <laughs> bad in the system. That, yeah. Uh, so what did you so, do? So what I did is, um, first of all, uh, when, when this happened, I could go bankrupt because I didn't have the money to to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. I was betting a lot. And the other, you know, doing the website and selling the software for lawyers wasn't enough to hold the, the rest of the team. And so, so I had to make some, some uh, difficult calls because um, we had to survive. Mm -hmm. And so the two options were uh, going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a smart choice because I would not blacklist it. But I have a, one thing from martial arts that is sometimes is terrible, <laughs> which <laughs> is honor. Mm. Honor is one of my biggest values. And so to, to have that, you know, kind of failure, and there is a lot of, you know, Elon Musk and a lot of people that have already have a bankrupt in, in companies and they just bounce back in a, in a very successful way. But I didn't want that in my record. I didn't want it in my record. And at the same time, I had like 10 people, uh, 10, 10 to 12 people around me that I didn't want to lead, let them down. Uh, like saying, okay, we are going to the door, so, you know, go away. Thank you very much. I didn't want to do that. And so, um, and the other option was, okay, trying to um, come up with a, with idea to survive. And so what happened was, first, I was, I was doing some some things with the banks trying to survive. And I had my old my bank accounts in negative. And my parents were very, very helpful. And they mortgaged their house. You, were you still living uh, with your parents at the time? Yes. Wow, you, yes. you, you stayed yeah. a long time. Was, it was the last year that I was It was 2002, them. right? Yes, because I was dating already with my wife. And you were 27 or 8? Yeah, it was more or less wow. that. Wow, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, and, uh, so they bank, and the, the, the they mortgage their house. Wow. Yeah, yeah. they mortgage their house. That's so it wow. was, it's scary. It, it, these were, then you, you took a lot of risk. Yes. But that, you knew that also was that the business model was right because... Yes, but that was really, really tough. That, that decision uh, almost broke my heart. Hmm. <laughs> it was tough. And at that year that uh, they, they did this, I stopped doing, um, I stopped teaching uh, martial arts. Because I, I needed my totally focus on, on the business. So that was the year that I stopped the dojos. I put the dojos to, to um, some of the students. And I totally focused on, on the company. So, yeah, that was really, really important to do that. Mm. Um, so, big, big, so did you still have access to the kiosk through another distribution yeah, company? so that's what I so did. So you, you tried to do? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I tried to apply the same thing. Of course, it would be difficult because in the first, there was a new... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So even though we could manage, we could manage to have some results, and we, we, during one, uh, almost uh, uh, one year, we could, I think we did like half a million 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So not bad. Not bad, not bad. You start to recover. Ju just for, for, to be clear about that, you never uh, got the 1 million back, right? No. Never? Never. Did you try it on court and uh, <laughs> when it's bank up, it's bank up? Yeah. You, the, the companies like yours are on no, the bottom. No. Yes, uh, my the debt was like the, the least because yeah. they were like a big, big group. Yeah. So first, first they paid the state, the state then and the, the employees, on bank employees. Yes. So and it was all like, the providers are like yeah. I think when they mm -hmm. do the you know the split, it, it would give us like 15 euros or something. So, <laughs> okay. so I'm not going to spend money and time of the lawyers and all that stuff anyway. So, um, so th that that was that was that was tough. Uh, so we, we we but during the time from the that bankruptcy to get the new contract, it took us like eight months mm. because the contracts with these kind of companies that have distribution, distribution company. it takes a lot and of this time. This time maybe you you were more cautious about the oh, yeah. financial oh, yeah. health. Uh, oh yeah, yes, and trying to find information. Something that I didn't do, you know, calling the banks, trying to get some information, all that stuff. Can you so do that? what we call the due diligence. The, the, the banks, the banks, they cannot uh, give you. Uh, yeah, but they do. You had some. Uh, they do. You know, okay. give me the, <laughs> give me the information. So we apply the force. So yeah, that's what we call due diligence. That's what we call due diligence. Everyone should do that. Smart enough should do that. So. Um, we, we uh, I, I start to have a, a negotiation with this, with this company, but during those times, you know, eight, nine months, and well, probably it took us one year to put the software again on the market, we had to survive. So I had to make a, a very, very, oh, another difficult call, very difficult call. So as you know, the VAT at that time, I think it was like 19% or 70%, now it's 23 in our country. But at that time, uh, it was like 17 or 18, and plus some other taxes. So I had to make a difficult call. I would pay the ta the state, the government, or I would pay my employees. Oh, so you paid your employees, but the state was not happy. Yes. Right. So, so I, that, I did that call. So during the next uh, like three or four years, because I was trying to recover, and when you have like a big debt in, in before, you try to recover and you try to pay, but the, you try to receive, but you, what you receive is not enough to, is not enough to pay immediately everything. So, you know, you you have this this always this uh, um, even though you are trying to to put lower, you have this battle in terms of cash flow, in terms of everything, um, because I then realized that I could sell. When I have the distribution, the other company, I could sell not only the software, but I could sell courses. And I started to sell courses. So mm. before selling courses online, I sold courses uh, offline in mm. a CD. Mm. And I realized that people were, were buying. And so, so with those courses, in, I think in like in two years, we did 1.5 million, which, which was really, really amazing. So you made really like good money. Yeah, at uh, that time, but and you could pay those estates, so yeah, well, no, 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 not okay. yet. So I could pay a little bit, but not what was behind. So, but did you negotiate with them so you could have no, like a so, payment plan? So the plan was the plan was because the the, the government was not like um, they didn't have the process and the workflow in places. They would take time, and so I was like, okay, let's use that time when they will uh, send me a letter or something like that. We'll handle it. So I usually say that one battle at a time. <laughs> we cannot win the war with just one battle. This is good for. And so what happened was in, in uh, from 2003 to 2006 we had this battle, and in 2006 they they came for me, of course, saying, "Okay, hey, you need Dude. to pay <laughs> <laughs> plus 40 percent plus 40. yes, plus this plus this plus this." I was like. So did you try to use the force again? Yeah, but that, th this was a tough call again. because So this was the second time in my life that I was like on the verge again of for the bankruptcy. Because we were paying, but we couldn't uh, yeah. pay the rest. So we were like, oh, shit. So we had this also in front. But then something happened. And uh, when we try to focus on solutions instead of the problems, there is always something happening. Mm. And what happened was we received an email from Angola. Angola. Angola, yes. Because Angola is also... Sp uh, it speaks Portuguese. Yes. It yes. Speak, yeah. yeah, and I received an email um, of a, a company, and I, and I had, at that time, a uncle 
working in Angola. He was a missionary. And I sent an email to, to him saying, hey, do you know this company? And he, he replies to me back saying, that's not the company. That's the company in Angola. So, uh, so we start to negotiate with them. Course, what did they ask you? Mm -hmm. What did they ask you? What, oh, they, they asked me information about the, the legal software. software. Oh, okay. The legal one. So because they have a department, at that time they said like three licenses. Oh, like three licenses, come on. Okay, but then I realized it was like 120 licenses. And in Angola, at that time, it was 10 times the price, the usual price. So mm -hmm. we would like times 10. So if something would cost like 1,000 euros, it was 100 there. Because there was also some risk, you know, Angola was, uh, uh, it had get out of um, a war. Um, so and there was some risk, some security risks. So so we start to with the, with the, with this company and we start to negotiate and we got a, a huge contract. And I cannot say the, the value, but it, we got a huge contract that helped us to to get over this this challenge. So you you managed to pay the government? Yeah. Did we, you have we, to pay we, forty no, percent? No, uh, we, we we had to pay we had to pay that forty percent. Oh but God. we managed to pay like. Uh, uh, in a, in agreement with the payment plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with the payment plan. So we, because I didn't want to, okay, pay everything, and now I'm zero again. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, and I have to deliver the software, and I have to travel to Angola, and I have to, okay, because we also we always need money to right to run the company. Exactly. So, uh, but it was, and then I realized, okay, if I sell to Angola, I can sell to other other countries, <laughs> because sometimes we are so into our business. Right. That we lose completely. We are like this, you know. So you realize you you could first like uh, sell in Portuguese yeah. speaking countries, yeah, but also other languages, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I started. Okay, maybe maybe the you know this legal stuff, this legal solution that we developed, maybe it applies to you know other countries. So I start to go. I start to go to conference in in other countries, and I start to deal with lawyers in other countries, and I start to realize, shit, this is. Equal everyone, uh, the, the same pains, same objections, you know, same needs. Mm. So, so I start to realize, okay, I think we can sell uh, in other countries. Of course, we, we we went from countries that were first with the with the same language, mm -hmm. or so or very similar. Also Mozambique, yeah, Mozambique, Brazil. Cabo, Verde, Cabo Verde, Brazil. Um, then we start also with Spain. Uh, and, and suddenly, we had also a, a Portuguese guy that bought us the software, and he was from Macau. Where we are right now. <laughs> exactly. Ah, okay, because Macau was a Portuguese colony, yeah, was, like city for yeah. 500 years. Yes, yes. It was given by the Chinese because Portuguese helped uh, to... The emperor? The, uh, no, it helped deal them with, uh, with pirates. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. And then Portugal gave it back to China in 1999. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, so there was a, there was a lawyer um, also in, in, from my from my town that uh, knew a little bit of me, but you know he saw the internet and uh, all that stuff, and uh, they bought the software. And so, but I didn't come to Macau for I think for two years uh, after they buy. Because I was totally focused on the, those countries in Africa, and Africa was booming. You know, we we, we could sell, like I said, we could sell something that costs five thousand dollars in or five five thousand euros in Portugal. It cost it would cost like fifty thousand there. So it was a great great opportunity, and um, and I was traveling there uh, a lot. I was traveling the that that other, but anyway. Then we came here, and then we start to translate our software into Chinese. We already have the software in English, and we start to um, to sell here in Macau, and then you know. And then it, it went great. Yeah. And now you have a successful software company. Yeah. yeah. You have how many employees in Portugal? Well, we are twenty now. Twenty. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I had. And we 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 uh, we expect because for a long time, and this is very important for a long time. I decided not to grow my company. So I would, if I had something that, I imagine that I had a, um, a software project. And uh, the software project would involve to get more three or four developers. I would, I would subcontract. I would subcontract them, um, especially through Odesk at that time. Okay? Subcontract them, they would work, we would do the job, and that's it. And that also was something important that I realized, and which is, most of the software companies, they start to develop services. 
you know, building customized software for other companies. But I realized that uh, those projects always, they don't end on time. They always, you know, overpass the budget. So I realized I need a product. I need a product. I need to develop something that I could sell. If I sell one or if I sell 1,000, it's almost the same cost for me. Mm. And so, uh, so I was always looking for that, always looking for that. Even when sometimes we'd show up, uh, you know, a big project to develop from zero, I would be careful because we had like a couple softwares that we developed from zero, but it was a pain in the ass because, uh, um, you know, there was some, sometimes there were some disagreements with the client, even though we had everything on, re on writing. Uh, but it was even in emotion, in terms of management, our emotions were, it was difficult. So I thought, okay, product, I want a product to, to sell. And so I made a decision that I didn't want to grow the company in terms of organically mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. I said, okay, mm -hmm. I don't want, because I want to do, I have to deal with employees. I have to deal with, you know, the, the cash every month. Uh, uh, I had already passed for two key moments. Like I told you, two, two key moments that I didn't like at all. So I didn't want to grow. But until a certain point, until a certain point, like two years ago, more or less, two years ago, uh, one of our friends, Jason Friedman, that, uh, right. that I don't know, you, you already interviewed him. So I don't exactly. know if he's already online uh, or not. I think it will be online when uh, <laughs> this video will be published. Yes. OK. So uh, and I was talking with Jason. and. Jason grew his company from zero to 150 million dollars, and I and I asked him what was the one thing, the one thing that made the, the total difference of growing your, the company, and he said one particular thing, which, which was decision. We decided to grow. To grow, yeah. And that was that was a, almost like a ha ha moment, because I knew by myself that I didn't I didn't want to 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 grow, and I was like debating myself, should I grow or should I not grow? And that was hurting my company. That was hurting my company. So, so I gather my core team, I have like four people that deals with the, you know, sales, financial, that stuff. And I, and I said to them, okay, we are going to grow. We are going to grow. So we have a plan for this next like 12 to 88 months to double the team. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Because yeah, we, have a, we have a couple of projects going on. Yeah, you have this big project of uh, launching your software in the cloud. Yes. Uh, in the, how many languages? In eight. Eight languages. Woo! Using the product launch formula. Yes, using so, PLS. Which will be like uh, new for, yeah. for you. And also, that's also interesting, is you started a side business where you sell information yes. courses. So, new best selling product so far in this field is a, uh, a product about how to be unstoppable, mm -hmm. right? How, yeah. Like where you. You, you take like what you learn to become a worldwide champion, to an entrepreneur, entrepreneur to like t uh, train people to be like to have more energy, to be more motivated, to yeah, special to break through, to break through, yeah, special to break through. So and if they, build, if they have a world that yes, like, is, and not, uh, not only breakthrough but breakthrough and build a, a network around that. Mm. Oh yeah, you you this guy is so good to connect with people. But you you, you hear this story, right? It's like you heard. It's like yeah, I had this friend, I had this friend, I had this friend. He's making yeah. friends all the time. So <laughs> yeah, no, because it's it's really important. People don't think. Okay, uh, I was not world champion alone. Yes, I was the 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 guy that was fighting in the middle. But that was the result of a lot of people that helped me. So it's it's really important. And so I. I like two years ago, I was like, um, I, I wanted to do something, something that could help people because I, I saw, and, and also this was related to a, a big depression that Portugal had. Mm -hmm. Portugal had a, a depression, which- A crisis, you mean? Economic yeah. crisis? Yeah, like and, a... and it was bailed out. It was bailed out, you know. Uh, we had, they have to, to borrow money to Portugal to survive. And- um, To loan money, yeah. yeah. To give money, like to loan yeah, money. Exactly, so exactly. Money, Portugal would not bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. So, and so I saw people totally depressed, totally depressed. And they would not, you know, they were too, too focused in their own issues and uh, their own challenge. And they, and I thought to myself, and also I went to Brazil and I saw the same thing. So I thought to myself, I, I think I could help, you know, I could help some people at least. And, uh, and also the entrepreneurs, because I saw the entrepreneurs also totally uh, not smiling and uh, very difficult. And after, after passing by two moments that were very hard for me, and I could manage 
I said, okay, I think I have the experience also to help that. Because the day before, uh, in 2002, the day before, every, the day before I decided not to bankrupt, everyone, like everyone around me said, do this. And maybe it was the most logical option, but... Yeah, you, it was a logical and option. And sometimes you have to make this kind of call. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes you have to go up through intuition, even if it doesn't make sense, you know? Right. Sometimes. But the thing is, um, so what I was talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think the fourth time you asked me that in this interview. Yeah. So as you I'm can see, Ricardo is really successful, but uh, you know, he's a bit, uh, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I was talking about the, the, so the two years before I saw this depression. I said, okay, I can do a, I, I think I can make a program where I will teach people how to be unstoppable. So you had this idea, uh, yes. and that's when you and started to learn about the product launch from yes. yeah, on this kind yes. of stuff. Yes, so I can, I can help on that, and, uh, and, yeah, yeah. So and, and use all the knowledge in terms of martial arts applied in the Western world and uh, in a different way. And so I came up with this, with this program that I start to sell. And at the same time, because it was an inner conflict, is how do I position this inside the company? Mm -hmm. It was a, it is, it's always a battle, but I realized that this was a, an amazing personal brand. Amazing, that's, and it's called the Unstoppable Kiai, so that's why. So, finally. Okay. So, before we finish the interview, can you share with us uh, what is your next big project? Yeah. So, our biggest project that we have been developed for the last seven years so uh, there is one thing sometimes it's very important is to have patience mm -hmm. and to believe in the product or to believe in the project in mm -hmm. that case and so we have developed for the, the last seven years a software as a service mm -hmm. because also we, we we've been testing and and doing some um some research in the market and we knew that if we were like three years before and this because this project is applied to lawyers so like three or four years ago, if we would talk about cloud to lawyers, they would say, well, no, no way, no way. I will not put my thing in the clouds. But the things have been totally uh, transforming. And now it's really a key moment to launch a kind of uh, solution like this. So we are going to launch a software as a service in eight language uh, for law firms, up to 20 people. And, um, and it's going to be one of the, our probably the biggest launch ever that we are going to do until until now. And this time we don't have a distributor in the middle no, to take no, all your money. No, this time, even though the gateway payments will be different. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll learn, you will learn, we'll learn. And, um, and yeah, we're going to a PLF style and we expect to break some records in our, in our groups. Awesome, cool. Cool. And also you plan to uh, have uh, launch more like online courses. Oh yes, uh, yes. For, for your personal brand, like uh, Unstoppable Yes, GI. yes, yes. Because uh, it, it, it's almost like a snowball. Mm -hmm. We are we are seeing that the for every launch we are double or uh, quadruple. <laughs> the last launch we quadruple. Uh, and so we are seeing that there is a, well, we also, we are tuning all, every time the, our avatar. And so the things are, are getting well and getting good. And the impact also in people are amazing. We have amazing case studies. And so one of the ideas is also to go to the English market uh, still this year, like in the end of the year. So awesome. that's okay. going to be our project. So to finish the interview, ah, because you know, it was very long. So people who are still watching, they are super motivated. They are like crazy on fire. Okay. So imagine like someone is still watching now. I think there are some people. And St still there? Are you still there? <laughs> if you, hey, hey, if you're there, <laughs> put in the comments something a bit funny like, uh, yeah, yeah. okay. Like, like Kia. No, 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 wait. L like put in the comments that you like Ricardo's hairs. Oh. So we will know we, we, you watch until then. It's awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and in French, uh, <laughs> just say, uh, j'aime les cheveux de Ricardo. <laughs> j'aime la coupe de cheveux de Ricardo. That's very good. Okay. So, um, okay. To these people that are still mm. watching, and that is, they are like, oh yeah, that's, it seems amazing. I want to be an entrepreneur also. Uh, what would be your advice for people who are, who are starting or who wants to start? Well, first is just do it, man. Just do it. Because sometimes people take too much time in planning. Mm -hmm. Planning. They don't, they don't do it. And it's important to do because sometimes 
a lot of things that we say, even even we with our experience, sometimes we say like it is this way and it's the other way. Uh, so you have to test, you have to do it, test, learn from that. And so I would say like just just do it. But if you are um, if you have some issues with your with your values, uh, like if security is very important for you, uh, okay, stay with your job for a certain period, get some you know some cash flow, some reserves, and at the same time work the the rest of the of the hours, and then you just go, you just go for it. So just do it, just do it. Okay, thank you, man. It was Woo! awesome. Thank you, Mirobel's Intelligent. I hope you enjoyed this amazing interview with Ricardo. So uh, you can uh, go to check his English YouTube channel. We put a link uh, somewhere uh, in the description, in the comments somewhere. And also, uh, don't forget to watch this complimentary video about how Ricardo became a World War Champion of Karate. And don't forget to click on the button to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, be intelligent. Be rebel, be part of the people who move their ass and be part of the people who... Kiai! <laughs> Ciao.